Hello everyone, I am Torior and welcome to my newest Hearts of Iron 4 challenge. Today we are going to be doing the 30 minutes of hell achievement, my way. What is the achievement? You have to start in 1939, play as Poland and kill 1.8 million German troops. Now there are a few ways of doing it and most of them require you to just do things very well and defend uh, yourself around the rivers here. But of course being me I have a vastly different idea which will be a bit cheeky and also much more effective. This is an achievement so we need to do Ironman, regular difficulty historical focuses, Poland 1939. But before we start a message from a sponsor. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. And in case you haven't heard about it, though you probably have, it is a brand new collection RPG game. It is a mobile game, but also a callback to older RPGs with turn-based fights. It has a cool storyline, giant bosses, and more than 400 champions to play and customize. It's fun, but it also teaches you some life lessons. For example, do not mess with a dragon. The game has a nearly perfect score on the Play Store, it has great reviews and also great graphics. See how crazy the level of detail is on these champions. The game is growing super fast and expect to see a huge update this month, which will be pure fun for new players, this is the best time to join the action. So if it looks and sounds like something you'd like, go to the video description, click on the special link and you will instantly get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion to start your journey. On a personal note, I actually played the game before I was even approached to do this promo. It's fun, it's free, try it. Alright, back to the game, 1939 Poland Ironman historical focuses. Also, one more thing, um, you did give my last video 15,000 likes in a week, so I will be doing Iceland. But I do have a couple of other videos planned before that, so it will take a couple of weeks for this to happen. But it will happen. Time to go! Oh right, there was a patch recently, I think they did something with my shadow puppet scheme. I'll have to revisit that and make it happen again. So we have 64 divisions, and we're about to be attacked by the Germans. And the Soviets. And of course we could just try and defend our territory as best we can, uh, but where's the fun in that? I might have a bit of an unorthodox approach to Hans of Iron 4, I find the combat boring. I know that's heresy for many of you, but uh, the politics and manipulations that you can do in the game are uh, what I play it for, not the combat. So I'm going to try and avoid the combat. Let's do Polish militarism, focus our factories on infantry equipment, hire Roman Domowski, a fascist demagogue. This is important. And the rest here is also useful but less important. Let's also go to free trade because that's always a good choice and do we have a silent workhorse? No. Alright, that's enough for now. We need to prepare for a civil war, but we do not have enough support for the fascists. No problem, just a few actions here and we will. First we need to open up political discourse, discredit the government, and now we do have enough support for the fascists. So we can prepare for civil war. We have too much stability to start the civil war, uh, let's do anti-democratic race, although I'm not sure I need to because when we are at war stability goes down anyway, but let's, let's do it. But don't start the civil war just yet. This is much more complex than that. Let's also build some civilian factories around our capital. And we have four research thoughts. Improved competing machine. Whoa, that's a lot of industry we've researched already. Good. Some infantry equipment, land doctrine. I don't like grand battle plan. I just don't. And I usually go with superior firepower or mass assault. But just to keep things changing a little bit, I'm going with uh, that grand battle plan this time. Now this will take over a year, so maybe it is not the best choice, but let's do it anyway. We don't really have anything better to spend our research thoughts on right now. Dockyard, just some convoys, we don't need a navy at all. And that is about it. Now let's unpause. No need to prepare for our fight with the Germans. Soviet Union is justifying war goal against us. Oh right. Now we need to catch the precise moment when Germany attacks us. And pause immediately. We can't let even one extra hour pass when that happens. Oh, free civilian factories. Cool. This is why I am on speed 2. I should probably just go down to speed 1 anyway. Now if you don't pause precisely at the moment of the German attack, this whole strategy will not work. I have slowed down to speed 1. It is vital that I don't miss the moment of the German attack. We must react in the same hour. It's gonna take a while, they're still preparing. Oh, we could do some war propaganda against the Soviets. Sure, let's do that. Also, let's justify war on Hungary in the meantime. See, my plan is to ignite the civil war exactly at the moment of the German attack. If we do it one hour earlier, it will not work. If we do it one hour later, it will also not work. Okay? Did I manage to pause at the same time? I think so. The Germans have declared war on us. This is very important that we pause at this exact time. I think I said that three times already. Because if we paused earlier, they would have attacked us. You know what? I'm gonna show you. Paused at the exact moment of their attack. Nobody else has joined our war yet, because we have been guaranteed by the Allies, but they have not joined yet, because the game needs to tick once for them to join. They have not joined yet, which is perfect. What we're going to do is ignite the civil war now. See? 
We are now uh, Falang is Poland. And immediately we got an invitation to the Axis. I'm going to accept it. Boom, we are in the Axis. Now, if we did that earlier, if we did that before the German attack, they would have attacked us anyway. If we did that afterwards, if we waited, for example, one or two more hours before we ignited the civil war, then Poland would be a member of the Allies and we would have to fight Britain and France as well. By igniting the civil war at the exact moment of the German attack, we have splintered our country into two and we have sided with the Germans. However horrible that might be, it saves us from being taken over by the Germans. So now we need to act quickly because all this territory might be given to the Soviet Union um, momentarily. And we do need to take out uh, our enemy before that happens, or at least get some units here uh, because we might be unable to reach this area afterwards. Attack and attack. Let's give them some generals. We have two. Good. We're going to promote you once we have the points, but we don't have the points. For now, let's just add them as normal generals. I can give them to an army group, but I don't have a field marshal anyway. And yeah, that's about it. We can unpause now and hope for the best. Be super aggressive and attack. Also, let's do the quick transport for you. See, now we are in this war together with the Germans, but it is a civil war, so everything they take should go to us. The problem is uh, the event that gives the Soviets this territory. It results from the ribbentrop motov Pact, and we do have to get stuff here before it happens. Move quickly. This way we will be safe to prepare for a proper fight with the Germans, and we will have an easy time inflicting the casualties we need on them. Alright, we're progressing there nicely. I'm also justifying a war goal on Hungary. Not sure if I will use it. We would have to be able to declare war on them before they join the Axis. But it might happen. Ah, see? Last possible moment. <laughs> uh, the Soviet Union took over all this territory, but we did manage to get one unit here, so we will be able to take these and win uh, the war. Because if we were cut off, all these victory points might be insufficient. USSR occupied Eastern Poland, a horrible sacrifice, but one we have to make. Okay, the guys that are already in Soviet territory need to get over here. Soviet Union, would you give me military access? Of course you would not. And that's pretty much it. That's how you retain uh, your independence in 1939 as Poland. But we still have to kill 1.8 million Germans. Also, we have kept this territory. It doesn't have any factories. Well, okay, it has one factory. Uh, but uh, we will also retain the manpower from it. Which is great. Now, precise timing is very important here, because if we were to ignite the civil war earlier than we did, then the Germans would have attacked us anyway, I think. And if we were to do it later, then the Allies would get involved and this war would not have ended. We would still be at war. Now, time to turn to Hungary and kill them. Uh, I will take over Hungary, and then we'll think about attacking Lithuania, but for that to work, I have to keep these troops over in this part. So you're just gonna stay there. Now this is a difficult bit to breach, but the Hungarians should be fortifying the border against the Germans as well, uh, so we should have a chance of doing it properly. Essentially what I'm going to do is build my strength while in the Axis so the Germans can't attack me and take my stuff. Well, they've already attacked me once and then turn against them and kill all those German troops that I'm required to kill. Uh, this is a trap for Hungarian troops. Hopefully they will um, spill over here and then I can cut them off. Also, I'm gonna need more troops. All right, how do you like my opener for 1939 Poland? Also, I think I missed an opportunity because we could have gone to total mobilization at the moment when we were attacked, um, but total mobilization also has some negatives, so I think I'll just go to war economy. And extensive conscription. Okay, that's it for now. And with Polish militarism, we will have much more manpower. And with Polish revanchism, we'll be able to declare war quickly. Or rather, justify war goals quickly. Also, do I need all that cavalry? No, I don't. Let's switch them all to infantry. And exercise them a bit. Oh, you're getting attrition because we don't have a connection here. That's gonna be a problem, but perhaps they can stay strong enough to defeat Lithuania. Lithuania does not have a big army. We can always call in Germany if we need to. Yeah, the Soviets did really do a number on us. Well, I can always attack from German territory if I have to. Finland accepts Soviet demands. All right, and better guns, here we go. Romania joins the Axis, that is actually good for me, and I will gladly join the anti compton Pact. Let's go for Polish revanchism. Let's do offensive, charismatic, and organize. I don't have the points right now. Germany attacks Luxembourg, we are not getting involved. See, attacking here, especially as it's a hill province, would be very difficult. So I'm going to just let the Hungarians get into our territory and then crush them there. Yeah, let the Germans attack the Allies, we don't want any part of that. Ah, better guns researched. Let's move towards uh, the best ones, slowly. 
Polish revanchism is done. Does it affect the war goal that was already underway or not? No. Once we're done with the Hungarian war goal, we'll try one against Lithuania and see what happens. Oh, nope, we won't. There's no more Lithuania. So these troops here are completely useless. So Polish revanchism won't really be useful because we don't have anyone else to attack. We'll just take out Hungary and use their factories to build up ourselves. Let's move towards the additional research slot because we will have the appropriate factories soon. Right, there's 20 days until we attack, so let's just stop the exercise and uh, assign the armies properly. Whoops, I made an oopsie with the number of troops. I need three more units. Maybe I can get them in time. I mean, it doesn't really matter. We should have enough to beat the Hungarians anyway, but, um, you know, I like having full armies. Let's also get an offense expert. In the meantime, Germany has, of course, taken France over. And our justification against Hungary is complete. Okay, I'm going to just declare war on them. They are fascists, so they're not going to be joining anyone, and I'm not going to be calling anyone in. Now, we wanted them to get into our territory over here. Soviet Union attacked Finland, we could have exploited that to make the Soviets fight the Allies, but we have no need of this. Come on, Hungarians, fill this territory. I do have some planes, let's assign them over here. See, I need them to be spread thin. Actually, I should have let them in more. Yeah, let's do that. Let's let them in more. Go like this. And once they are spread very thinly over here, I can cut them off at this point and eliminate them. Come on, Hungarians, I need more troops here. Yugoslavia is fighting Bulgaria. Not my problem. Let's use a front line so that we can get a preparation bonus. Also, you guys need to switch to a front line as well, so you too can have preparation bonuses. I think it's time to attack. You, push here. It's just one cavalry unit, they won't stand a chance. Oh, I have an old guard guy, I forgot about him. Sure, I'm gonna hire him for extra political power. Strikes, mm, let's take the expensive option. We have taken over this bit. Now these Hungarian troops will have no resupply, so we can kill them easily. And you guys should be able to push a little bit into Hungary, but if not, it's not a problem, uh, because we have uh, decimated their troops. Well, maybe not decimated, but we certainly will destroy a lot of them here, and I can just repeat this process if I want to. This is a good strategy if you only have a very small border with the enemy, and it's difficult to push through that. Yugoslavia is fighting the Germans, so that's all right. I think I'm going to do staff office plan and then force attack on these guys. Because if we can break through here, Hungary is ours, essentially. And yes, we can break through here, so Hungary is ours. This order needs adjustment, only from this province. We don't need the Germans taking our stuff. Oh, also, uh, they got a bit of Romania, which is going to give us even more territory. Cool. As you can see, this is going great. Can I just push for the victory points and win? There would be no need to massacre these troops then. All right, half of you stay where you are. Half of you go over here. They are cut off from supply, but they have a sufficient amount with them, so they'll be all right. Yugoslavia has capitulated. How about Hungary? Almost there. Need some more victory points. Where else are the victory points here? There. Go. I mean, if this doesn't win the war, then I can just push more troops in. Nope, it did win the war. Okay. Do I need a puppet or do I need to annex them? I think I'm just going to take all states. Okay, good. 62 factories. Let's get uh, an extra research slot. And start preparing to fight the Germans. Oh, the Soviets are just firing a war goal on us. And that is going to change things. We're going to have to work with the Germans a little bit more. Oh well, I did not think that would happen. It's a bit early for them to fight the Germans. And we will be victorious, I think. Because, see, because we will have the Germans on our side as a member of the Axis, so the Soviet Union should not stand a chance against us. Especially since it's still very early for them to fight the Germans. And that one army that is left here will just protect Vilna. Where are the German troops? There should be German troops all around our territory. No, Britain, you can't have military access. Two full armies should be enough to hold off the Soviets, at least until uh, help from Germany comes. Also, we will have Romania on our side, and Romania as an AI is pretty capable. Yay, additional research slot. The Soviets have finished their justification on us, and they have attacked. Now, if the Germans come to our aid, which they should do, let's call everyone in just to be sure, we should be all right. Come on, join me. No, because dangerous borders. Yeah, yeah. They will join sooner or later. Naval invasion. I did not consider that. Let's detach a couple of units from this army and get you north. Fortunately, Croatia has come to our aid here. Yeah, this is unfortunate. I don't think we can hold them off without the Germans' help. I was counting on that. You know what? I'm just going to leave the Hungarian bit of our territory. 
and protect the main part. We can't let them take over our capital. Can I at least get some Italian troops in here? All oh, right, there are some Italian troops in here. <laughs> Finally, Germany has been called in. So we will be able to push back on that once Germany is in the war and Germany has joined the war. I really did not expect the Soviets to attack so soon. We'll just fight them together with the Germans and take lots of Soviet territory. Mexican Soviet Republic joined Comintern. Whoa. Okay. The Soviet Union isn't really ready for this war, I think. And we should have the upper hand, just need for the Germans to fully commit to the war. It's gonna take a moment. See, we're already pushing back. What is my war participation? 41. Now it's 1941. So the Soviet Union should not be strong enough to beat us. Going well, but I'm going to have to give it time. Yeah, I'm just gonna let this run until we're victorious. Oh. Civil war in Mexico. Cool. And volunteers from Japan, gladly. We are researching the best guns, and we have retaken our core territory, which translates to more manpower. Poland first, and time for the best guns. That's a lot of Soviet troops about to be slaughtered. United States joined the Allies. I am focusing on excavation, but I probably should be focusing on encryption and decryption. We'll do that next. Poland first for extra stability, and ideological fanaticism for the same. We are getting a lot of territory under our control, aren't we? That's very good. Yeah, the Soviet resistance is pretty much broken. It is of course gonna take some time, but we will be victorious. And I should be able to take like half of the Soviet Union if I play my cards right. Maybe make them a puppet. One million manpower is a lot, but why stop there when we can have more? I think we should do the construction repair repeating focus, because we do have a lot of damaged stuff we're taking from the Soviets, and construction repair also helps the passive repair that happens on its own. Should I do total mobilization? Probably. Sure, let's do it. This war will take a while, and that'll help our construction. Now, we'll also have to do women in the workforce, but uh, for that we need a little bit more political power. I really could use more units, but we can't really fill the demand for guns for the ones we already have, so getting more units would be foolish. Made our treatment of the Soviet conquered stuff a little bit more harsh, because there's a lot of troops here anyway. So they should keep everything in check. Germany attacking from Turkey. Yeah, this is a long thing. But it will work in the end. The expeditionary forces coming back again. Yeah, that's the problem with expeditionary forces. The AI seems to like to send them and then call them back and then repeat. Let's do women in the workforce for some extra manpower. Pushing through nicely. Oh, and Crimea has been taken over by the Italians. Oh, wait a minute, we took Moscow and I didn't even notice. Huh, what's my participation? 21%. Good. Encirclement. Cool. Push and kill them. Let's start researching some other support companies, because I will want to have a full outfit of those. This is going quite well, because the Soviets attacked too early. They were not ready to defeat the Germans. Leningrad is taken. And so is Stalingrad. This is looking right somehow, isn't it? I wonder, if I had German expeditionary forces and then let them die, shouldn't it count for the achievement of killing German troops? How long until the Soviets capitulate? Not long at all, actually. Okay, what's going on here? Romania wants to restore the alliance. Yeah, sure, let's guarantee Romania. Also, work on some artillery. We are already bigger than Germany. Oh! They capitulated faster than I anticipated, and the Germans did take quite a lot of territory already, but that's not a problem. So apparently, Shadow Puppet doesn't work anymore. That's what I heard. Let's see if that's true. Take all states. And yes, the Puppet option disappeared. That's not really a problem, because you can just, instead of Shadow Puppeting, just puppet them with a province that costs one. So effectively there is not much change, but I suppose I'll need to make a new updated video. Okay, then let's just puppet the Soviet Union. Take our core territories. Okay, let's end the turn. The Germans will, of course, take more territory, but that's not really a problem. Now, this is the best way of doing that, you know, through a puppet, because the province war score cost is significantly lowered. And if we can cut the Germans off that way, they won't be able to take any more territory. To cut them off, we need to take everything they're bordering and everything that is coastal. Uh, we have done that, not sure if this counts as coastal, probably not. And now we can push it a little bit further. Alright, that's too much. End the turn. And now the rest we can pretty much take for ourselves. So let's do that. It's gonna give us some beautiful border gore. Did I mention I like border gore? See, now we're taking it for ourselves, not for our puppet, because we only need them to cut off the Germans and make sure they don't get too much territory. Now that we have cut them off, we are not in a hurry anymore. And I can just take stuff for myself, making our borders oh so beautiful. And that is uh, it. Okay, we have taken over most of the Soviet Union, the Germans only got a little bit. Let's end the peace conference. 
So beautiful, isn't it? The Germans got a bit, I got a larger bit, and also a Russian puppet surrounding all that territory. Now time to prepare to fight the Germans. Now we need to work on killing a lot of Germans. Fortunately, we are not pressed for time, we can do it as slowly as we want. We do want to annex Russia, so let's uh, work on building some factories in their territory. Now we're going to have to amplify our infantry. Uh, let's add signal companies, engineer companies, artillery, and I'm thinking of adding rocket artillery as well. Also, let's uh, increase their size to 20 width. Now we just wait and gather up our strength, and also let's exercise these guys. Actually, I need a lot of small units, so let's cancel all that. Have the manpower come back. Unfortunately, we lost some due to women in the workforce, but that's not really a problem. And train all those cavalry brigades, which are super small and which we will use to uh, get all that Russian manpower stolen. Once the autonomy is low enough. Catholic Mexico has capitulated. Oh, so... Ah, right. They were at war with the United States because they joined the Axis. Well, that's not very smart of them. I'm going to wait a year or two before I actually engage Germany. I need to build up my strength. We don't need to lose our own manpower needlessly. We just need to kill them. And now we can annex uh, Russia. Of course, we're going to need to steal their manpower first. I've deployed all the cavalry I can deploy. Let's assign them to an army. Disband all the expeditionary forces from Russia. Now prepare a template with Russian manpower. Let's just copy Stirkovaya Divizia. See how much Russian manpower is taken. Now I'm going to give them all their core territory back so their manpower goes up. Russian Empire return territory. Everything that is their core will go back to them. See? Now their manpower will go up. One million more. Let's wait for that to be absorbed into our units. It was absorbed into our units and now I can annex them. And that's it. Poland everywhere. Let's edit our infantry division to add support rocket artillery. Looks like I won't have enough manpower to sustain three four army groups unless I increase my conscription again, or go down to war economy. We're also going to need a lot of generals, but we're not currently uh, using our political power for anything, so it's not a problem. Advanced rocket artillery. I guess I'll build some forts on the main German border here. I suppose I could invade in Mongolia and Tanutuva in the meantime. There will be no consequences to that, because there are no other communists left. Sure, let's invade Mongolia, why not? That will be some extra factories. There's really nothing left for me to research that is worthwhile. Our justification on Mongolia is ready, let's attack. And they've called in Tanutuva, perfect. I'm not calling anyone in because we don't have to. Tanutuva capitulates. Time for us to go to uh, limited exports. There we go, let's annex them both. That's some extra factories for us. Okay, I think it's about time we started getting ready to attack the Germans. Let's cancel all the orders on all our troops and get all the armies in position. So this army group will attack from this side and these two will stay home. Now these guys might have some supply troubles, but we should manage. Alright, that pretty much covers it. Let's let our guys get in position. Let's exit the Axis now. The leave faction. Now the Germans will be slowly leaving our territory, we need to let them get back into their own, so that we can kill them there. And let's start justifying a war goal. Who should we attack? How about Croatia? Sure, let's attack Croatia. Now this part here can be a little problematic, because the Germans will be getting supplied through Romania. And that can be, you know, difficult. Uh, if we can cut that off... Well, that would be a major advantage to us. Our war goal is ready. We have a month and a bit of its validity. But essentially, I decided to change my plans. Um, I removed all uh, the troops from here and moved them to my main territory. Because um, of the supply situation. I think we'll actually benefit more if we push with supply. Rather than count on connecting our territories quickly. Because that could fail and then all these troops would be in a pretty bad place. As most of our troops have good fortified positions, I'm going to put everyone on cautious. This way we should be able to kill a lot of German troops while just defending ourselves. Alright, I think we're good to go. Let's attack Croatia. Now you'll see that immediately we'll have some uh, trouble with getting uh, resources from our overseas territories. If we can cut through the German defenses here quickly, we will no longer have that trouble. And as you can see, we are winning at the start. Should I accept the invitation to the Allies? Sure, I will. The Germans are defending their main territory, but they're not defending this part very well. And if we can connect our lands over here, we'll be able to exterminate quite a lot of German troops quickly. And if they keep pushing like they are pushing here, we'll just be, you know... We will be advancing, they will be advancing, we'll be pushing them further away from their supply all the time. 
which is a good thing. I'm actually most interested in capitulating Romania as fast as possible, and hopefully connecting our territory to the sea here. Ah, crap, Turkey joined the Allies, uh, the Axis. That could be problematic. Anyway, if we can connect our land to the sea over here, the Germans will have massive trouble with supply. They're taking our land here, but it doesn't really matter. If they focus on that, they're not focusing on the real threat. And the cautious approach seems to be working out quite well for us. I did not expect that to happen. Good to know. I usually just go full aggressive and lose all that manpower in the process. Let's see how many Germans we've killed, because we need to do 1.8 million. We have killed almost no Germans. Really? Oh, sorry, that's Italy. We have killed half a million Germans. We need 1.8 million for the achievement. The cautious approach is working out quite well. We've taken Berlin, and I didn't even notice. The German troops here are making a big mistake, because they're moving away from us. Uh, they are moving away from their supply as well. Right now, they're just going to Japan, apparently. How is our impact on the German casualties? We have killed almost a million. German Reich has called Iraq as our ally, because Iraq joined the Axis? That doesn't make any sense. Polish war on Iraq. Let's, let's just leave it. See, the Germans are just running to Siberia, which is not a good choice usually. We should be able to get our goal soon. Our production is very low, I'm missing resources because, you know, we're losing this territory and we can't even access it properly. That is slightly problematic, but we do have enough guns to see this through. And 1.9 million casualties! That is enough to get the achievement. Let me just check if I got it. Yep, there it is. I can't show it to you because I don't have uh, Steam Overlies uh, enabled. But yes, 30 minutes of hell as Poland in the 1939 Blitzkrieg scenario start inflict over 1.8 million casualties to Germany. We did that. So anyway, we could continue this to capitulate Germany, but the goal of this challenge was to beat the achievement. And we did it. So that's how you get 30 minutes of hell as Poland in 1939 without it being too much of a hassle. You just need to switch sides a few times and it becomes much easier. Now, it is already the end of 1945 and the game is running pretty slowly, so I'm going to end it here. We don't need to proceed to capitulate Germany. That would take a lot of time. That can be better spent. Namely, I need to develop my strategy for Iceland because that is coming. We have achieved our objective. We have killed... Um, how many now? One... Oh, 2.1 million uh, German troops as Poland starting in 1939. And if you do it my way, you don't have to deal with the hassle of fighting a losing battle against the German troops. You can just build up your strength and then destroy them. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this little video and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.